Good morning, worshipers. Welcome to chapel this nice, crisp Wednesday fall morning. We are glad you are here. Uh, this morning, we are going to hear an amazing word from our alumnus, our alumni, Joffrey Gill, class of 2012. And I think his supervisor said the Reverend Joffrey Gill. You know, we call those things that are not as though they are. We're going to just speak it into existence. Amen. You know, the, the song said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so um, it's just good to be here. Um, and so I think I want to lift up the announcements first and then we'll enter into worship. So tomorrow, Thursday, we'll hear another amazing word from an amazing Amanda, uh, the coordinator of the Riverside Hub. On Friday, we will hear a word from another alumni, uh, the Reverend Peter Weston Miller um, from Trinity Lutheran, and we'll also be blessing the male identifying basketball team. Uh, so it's just good. And then on Wednesday, a week from this evening, we will, um, we will celebrate relationships across uh, interfaith, Friendsgiving celebration, which is the coming together of uh, Hillel, MSA, and uh, Oxum student ministers um, and fellowship as we prepare uh, to just grow and live and be together. And so now let us center ourselves as we gather in this space um, in the presence of the divine, uh, mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, parent of us all. Let us enter worship with song. Come on, Grace. Well, greetings, everyone. Top of the morning. It's almost uh, afternoon, actually, here. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful introduction. 
thank you for the opportunity to be up here to the RIH team. Uh, shout out to the president and his team as well. Um, I wanna take a moment to, uh, actually before we take that moment, um, I was walking on campus this morning and you know, it took me like a long time to park and all that stuff. And so I had to park in a spot I probably shouldn't be parking in right now. And as I was leaving the parking lot, I like saw a couple of people and I looked at them and I nodded at them and I noticed they weren't even looking at me. I was like, yo, what's that? So I went to the second person I looked at them, I nodded, and they weren't even looking. They were like in this weird zone or whatever. And I was like, man, what is the world? What are we coming to? We're supposed to be Augsburg College, right? And I live all the way out in Savage, Minnesota. And when people walk past me, they look at me and they say, hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm like, hey, oh, <laughs> how's it going? So if we could take just a moment, just you don't have to say anything to everybody here, but give, give someone you haven't seen an eye contact and just a little nod. Well, wait, a hi with your eyes, a hey, what's up with your eyes? Uh, just because we're all humans and that's how we, we interconnect with each other. That's how we show love. That's how we grow. That's good for our spirit. That's good for what releases chemicals and stuff in our brain and makes us feel good. So that's important to me. Now, let's jump into a moment of prayer and meditation, if you will. And um, this will be a little bit different than what you, you may be used to, but I'd like you to find these two flames up here. Call them mother and father. And, um, and just focus in on the flame for a moment here. And I want you to breathe while you're focusing in. I want you to focus in on that abdomen spot, that little spot that pokes out when you breathe good and goes in when you're releasing. I want you to take a deep breath, inhale four seconds, and release that. And we're gonna inhale and release. Inhale and release. And continue to inhale and release and just follow my words here. And I want you to focus on your toes for a moment here. Feel those toes. I want you to feel the energy going up your legs. And as that energy is flowing up, I want you to relax your body. Relax your legs. Relax your back. Your belly. Your chest. I want you to move over to your shoulders. Out to your arms and your elbows all the way down to your fingertips. And I want you to take a deep breath. Feel your chest go out. And I want you to focus on your neck and the back of your neck and relax in those, those spaces. Up to your cheekbones, your chin, your nose, your eyes. over to your ears, into the back of your head, and all the way to the top of your head, to your temple. And just breathe for a moment. Now I want you to find these two flames, or one of them, depending on where you're at in here. And follow my words once again. We're going to have story time. <laughs> I'm just, just going to read from the Holy Scripture in the book of Luke 24, 13 through 35. And bear with me. I have a six-year-old son and I do a lot of reading time with him. So I get into it sometimes. So this should be fun. <laughs> now. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus and seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then, set, then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, he asked them, what things? They replied, the things that Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. Oh, something that just stood out to me here. If I'm correct, it wasn't the chief priest that handed Jesus over. It was actually the people. Hmm. Go back, jump in here. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some woman of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were, who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, <laughs> how foolish. Hold on, we'll put on my, my other voice. <clears throat> then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared, explanation mark. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer all these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures as they came near the village to which they were going. Hold on, let me stop for a second. He interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. I'm emphasizing that point because he took a lot of time to go over every single detail of what he was supposed to be doing. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. I like saying it like recognized him. Something happened up here and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So there's a, there's a few things I wanna emphasize here, and then I'm gonna like hit y'all with some bolo punches here, okay? And I wanna emphasize verse 16. They were kept from recognizing him. Verse 31, their eyes were opened, and verse 32, heart burning. And this, this really stands out to me because there are certain, there's, there are certain things that are not revealed to us just yet in our lives. It's like there's a veil over us or like there's a hand over, over our eyes. And we can look back at our childhood and actually see how many things our parents told us not to do or, you know, I don't do this, don't do this, but it didn't click in our heads until a little bit later, right? There was like this, like we just didn't get it until we got it type of thing. And so, Hmm. 
sometimes I have like these epiphanies right in the moment. So bear, <laughs> bear with me. There's this thing around, around control and thinking that we have control over the things that are happening in our lives. And it's almost like we try to get a grip on it. And I had this realization last night that it's not so much on, of having a grip on life, but having a touch on life. Like there's like this connection and there's this natural flow of things. And instead of trying to, like I can think of so many times in my life where I tried to force things to happen. And for a great example is my son. <laughs> I try to force him to get up in the morning, get dressed, get washed up so we can get out the door in time so I can make it to this meeting so I can do this. And, and he's like, nope, I'm not going. I'm like, what's wrong, dude? He's like, I just don't, I'm not going. And he doesn't give me any explanation either. He's just like, I'm not going. <laughs> and so he, this happened this morning. He's sitting in bed and he's like, has his little, his little lion, uh, teddy bear, lion, squishy thing. And he's just looking at me laughing. Ha ha ha. I'm like, all right, son. Okay, so it's going to be like that this morning, huh? And so I hit this point where I was like, like, where it's like, I can either get really frustrated and be like, ah. Spicy daddy, let's go. Or I can be like, hey, calm, cool, collected daddy. And you know what? Take your time. You stay in here. I'm going to go to the other room. I'm going to get washed up. And so that's what I did this morning. I went to the bathroom, got washed up. And like a few minutes later, here he is in the bathroom. Like, hey, daddy. And he slaps me on my butt. <laughs> let's go, daddy. Now, now he has clothes on and everything. So now he's ahead of the game. So there's something, there's something about just kind of like letting go of trying to control everything in our lives, like in realizing that the answer is like right in front of us, that Jesus is walking right with us the whole time. <laughs> Cracking up back there, thank you, you. So letting go, the veil must be removed. We don't remove this veil, we don't remove this thing of like ignorance or um, there's another thing um, around just not knowing. You don't know what you don't know, right? You can't do anything about that. People can point it out to you. There's <laughs> so many times in my life people have told me not to do this and I then I went and I did it. And I had to learn it myself. There's something about like God's revelation or something that like opens things up all of a sudden. And then, oh, oh yeah, there's this cool verse. I'm, I'm glad I wrote notes down. This is really good. God does this work from the inside out. And there's a verse in the Bible, it says, um, what does it say? The truth will make you free. There's two ways people say like the truth will set you free and then the truth will make you free. And those two, those, I, I wanna distinguish those two, those two points because it's really important. The truth will set you free means something from outside of us comes in and changes us. The truth will make you free, meaning something inside of you actually comes up and changes you. Oops, excuse me. It's, too, um, it's important to, to distinguish those two things um, because I believe that this transformation work that happens, happens on an inward, in an inward type of way. So wrapping it all, pulling it all together. If we are like, I have this concept, I just made this up last night of being not having a grip on life, but being in touch with life, how do you impact the flow of life, right? How do you get into this mindset of being like, all right, son, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna step over here. And this is what I've been going through this whole year. And it's brought me to this point where I feel like I'm just more in touch with life. I got a, a sense, a higher sense of things, um, a less like, I'm not as frustrated with life. That makes any sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you for the nods. It helps. It helps. It's like an interactive thing. So here goes my, my main little, my, my three doo -doo -doo points. Impacting the flow and letting go. Breathing. So I had you guys do a little bit of breathing just a moment ago. And I'm going to give you guys some, some science behind it. Breathing, even if you breathe, like you're having focused intentional breathing for about two to five seconds. And this is all about how you impact the flow of life, right? Two to five seconds of focused deep breathing changes your brain patterns, literally changes you physiologically, 
game, bringing you into a place of well-being, sense of balance, a sense of more focus and clarity. Breathing also, I was listening to this dude this morning on the way here, and he was like, hey, man, meditation actually begins to move the, it's moving the breath around, it's cleaning your blood. If you do it for like seven to 10 minutes, your, actual, your blood circulates through your body and it actually begins to move energy around your body. So now we're in a whole new state of being, we're in a new flow, you're almost a whole new being. Breathing, meditation, all the things that we've been told for a really long time that are important, but how many people do that on a regular basis? Got like two. All right, I'll take that. I'll take that right on. <laughs> These are key components to being a human being, to impacting the flow of life, to allowing God to remove this sort of veil. Second thing, facing your darkness. These are all things that I've been doing this year, breathing, facing my darkness, facing your darkness, embracing it, healing from past trauma. We all have had traumas in our life. We all have had crazy moments of like being broken and being hurt, being torn apart, being depressed and sad and like, what is life? And it is time to face these things, embrace it and heal, okay? Forgiveness, ooh. That's a juicy one. Um, Jennifer shared, oh, I was in this meeting not too long ago and Jennifer shared this book called Sunflower. And if I'm correct, this is about an Auschwitz prisoner who, and an, uh, an Auschwitz pr prisoner who forgave one of the guards that was working in the, um, in the, at the Auschwitz camp. And it immediately, when, she, when we were telling me about this story, I was like, ooh, I was like, this is really good. I'm about to put this in my message. And, and I was reminded of a, a coworker who wrote a book about forgiveness. And the book specifically focused on this mother whose son was murdered. And the mother, like intentionally, she went through whatever she needed to go through, but then she went to this man who murdered her son and forgave him. And then when you were talking about this story about the prisoner who forgave the guard, I was like, ooh, I was like, this is the, most like heart wrenching like thing that like for me I'll speak for myself probably not none of y'all dealing with forgiveness and letting go not just dealing with other people but dealing with myself especially forgiving myself now oof because when you forgive you start to let go of this anger and this hate and this bitterness and these are the chains and the weights that hold us down and from moving forward in life so I'll wrap this up. Breathing, facing your darkness, embracing it, healing, forgiveness. If you have somebody in your life who you're still holding things against, even if it's yourself, take a moment to forgive them or forgive yourself. And that just happens like you just say, I forgive myself. It's just something, <laughs> but feel it with your heart, right? Don't just say it, like feel it. And if we have more time, I'll be like, all right, let's take a few minutes and just work through this right now, but we don't got that much time. So my point is, if your heart is burning today, if there's something that's grabbing you, perhaps what you're looking for is right in front of you. And with that, thank you. Or I'll say, aho means wholeness. We'll close out with that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua, for that wonderful message. We'll move on to, uh, there we go, on to the blessing of the Riverside Innovation Hub. So those who are present that work with it, will you please stand up and receive this blessing. So a blessing is a circle of light drawn around a person to protect, heal, and strengthen. The beauty of the blessing is its belief that it can affect what unfolds, invoking the power and promise of the divine. 
We offer this blessing to those who dare to lead with innovation and are enacting creative change in the world. Today, this community together offers a blessing for the Riverside Innovation Hub. Holy One, bless the Riverside Innovation Hub, its congregational facilitators, its staff, and its church communities. May the light of their souls bless their work and the sacredness of their work bring re renewal to those who work with them and to those who receive their work. Bless them for the days where their work leads to weariness. For when they feel emptied in the midst of more to do, may they find rest and release to move forward into a calm and renewal for the work ahead. Bless them to feel excitement and inspiration. Awaken in them their willingness to fail and the flexibility to learn from the process. Grant them curiosity to move forward into the unknown courageously and make an impact in this world. Like Miriam, Aaron, and Moses, they have been called to help lead these communities through wilderness years. They help us navigate the cultural and spiritual transformation of these communities with faithful and generous leadership. We give God thanks for their spirit and for their visions and dreams that help shape our commitment to the gospel in liminal seasons. Riverside Innovation Hub, do you receive this blessing? Riverside Innovation Hub members and staff with courageous curiosity, go forth and embody this blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 